Okay, hi everyone. My name is Sam Smith. I am the head of school for animal welfare at Moulton College. Um, so I'm just going to give you um, a bit of an overview about myself before I go into providing an overview of our um, amazing animal welfare provision and an insight into our animal welfare animal care study program. So as I said, I'm the head of school for animal welfare and I've been working in FE for pushing on 14 years now. Um, so I started my, my teacher training a, a very, very long time ago um, and I, I did my undergraduate research uh, and studies in veterinary health studies. So my undergraduate research was in canine hydrotherapy. I continued with that to, to study my animal welfare master's degree where I um, look further into canine physiotherapy. So I do have a, a really keen passion for animals, obviously, which is why I do what I do. Um, but also a really keen interest in research and specifically canine hydrotherapy. So obviously I'm animal crazy. Um, I've got a passion for animal health and welfare and learning, um, in particular in supporting young people. So I don't actually get to teach a huge amount in my role, but um, when I do, uh, my favourite topics are obviously sitting around animal health um, and animal science. So animal biology is probably amongst my favourites in addition to anatomy and physiology. Um, and obviously, just from an interest point of view, like I said, obviously I'm animal mad, which is why I do what I do. Um, but I'm really into my fitness, so whether it's dog walking, horse riding, so anything fitness related, um, that, that's kind of what I really, really enjoy. So um, enough about me. I'm going to move on to giving you now an overview. So the presentation today is an overview of the animal welfare subject area. And I'm going to talk you through some of the opportunities that we can provide you if you are to consider, obviously, Moulton College to come and study animal care. So just first of all, in a nutshell, the, the animal care, animal welfare subject area really does provide um, anyone at any level um, an opportunity to come and study, come and learn um, how to care for and how to manage a very broad range of species. We also enable you to develop your, your practical skills and your knowledge to enable you to obviously progress, whether it be on to, to further learning, whether it be on to, to training, perhaps an apprenticeship or, or into employment. So obviously our courses, um, if you were to, to choose Moulton, you would study a broad range of subjects. Now, obviously, that does differ um, depending on the level. And I'll talk a little bit more about the levels later on in, in the next couple of slides but ultimately the animal welfare the animal care sector the industry is very very vast so it's really important that we offer you a broad range of subjects to enable you to gain the skills um, and develop in order to to progress into the industry obviously you're able to come to us to specialize your interests so if you were to progress up with us from say level two on to level three where you can um, tailor your interests and study uh, a stream option again which I'll talk a little bit more about but um, really in a nutshell we, we do have a course for everybody um, regardless of your level so like I said I will talk a little bit about the, the entry requirements um, and the levels a little later um, so obviously um, we have a state-of-the-art working animal welfare center so if you were to come and study with us you would obviously have access to that in addition to our amazing animal therapy centre which is which is comprised of the the canine therapy so the canine hydrotherapy and physio and our professional grooming parlour so obviously we, we are based at Moulton and um, but we've also got a satellite centre in High and Ferris so we've got a smaller centre a smaller collection over there and um, we've got an amazing collection over at High and Ferris but if you are based over in the east of North Ants um, it could be something to consider if you didn't want to commute so far um, on a coach, for example, or if you prefer a smaller kind of community, um, you know, learning environment, it would be also something to consider. So just bear that in mind, we do offer animal care at level two and level three over at our satellite centre in High and Ferris. So like I've said, um, our area really enables you to progress. So a lot of students will progress up through the levels including higher education. So a lot of our level three students do progress on to um, HE, so higher education and study at degree level. And we've had some great success 
with our level threes that have progressed on to various different degree programs again which I'll I'll touch upon a little bit later so what else we can offer you in addition to your your qualification you will develop um, your character strength so again when working in the industry it's really really important that um, you are you're you're resilient um, you know working with animals it it, it, it can be quite tough um, you obviously it's quite an active role so again we want to develop your your confidence working with with different species working with different team members so again we'll develop that in, in your practical sessions and with your work experience that we'll talk about a little bit later and also we will offer you various different forms of enrichment and just as an example just before I talk about it later is we have a South Africa study tour that we run every single year and we open that up to students who um, not only have an interest in animal welfare we do open it up to to land-based studies and, and HE students but students will have the opportunity to go on a two-week study tour around South Africa where they visit various different wildlife reserves um, including Kruger National Park which is obviously very very popular the students will complete different modules and units out there and um, so yeah that's just an example so what I'm going to do now is move on to the courses that we actually offer that was a, a bit of an overview really of the area and that I'll now go into further detail so we obviously offer courses from level one up to level three advanced levels so our level one program which is one year and again you can see it's, it's based at Moulton main site is a foundation program for students that perhaps haven't got their their c grades or their d or d or c grades in, at gcse um, and really want to to access um, a career or working with animals so that's a one-year program a foundation program a lot of those students would progress on to level two so as you can see we offer three level three uh, sorry level two programs so the most popular is our level two diploma in animal care which is one year and again we offer that at main site and over at high and ferrers now the level two again is a foundation program but does cover a broad range of topics so everything from animal health animal husbandry nutrition um, another level two program that we offer is called our level two work ready in animal care so students that are specifically focused on direct entry into the industry would study our level two work ready program so that's almost a tailored version of our level two diploma so half of that focuses on vocational learning so animal care animal studies and the other half there is a key focus on employability so again students that progress on from the level two work ready will go directly into the industry and of course brand new to september 2020 which is very exciting obviously we are launching our brand new level 2 certificate in veterinary care support so that option is for anyone who has a specific interest in entering the veterinary industry to work in a veterinary care support role so veterinary care assistance veterinary care support role so part of the the requirements to study on that course you would need a, a placement in an approved training center so a veterinary practice and part of the acceptance onto that course would you'd have a letter of um, approval from a veterinary practice so across the level two suite that we have the the grade profile varies slightly so for the diploma you would need to have achieved four d grades um, across the board and ideally we're looking for a d grade at least in english just to support you with your um you know the coursework and the studies and the assessment elements of that program with the level two work ready the majority of students progress from the level one diploma but obviously we do offer it externally so we're looking for two to three d grades for the level two work ready to include english ideally and with the level two veterinary care we are looking again for a, a degrade profile uh, to include English, maths and science. And that's purely down to the, the content um, of, of what you would be studying on that. It's quite scientific. Um, and obviously, in order to support you in that veterinary care role, where you would be working in a practice, working with veterinary nurses, working with vets, um, there are some calculations. So again, slightly higher level, but just a, a D profile across the board for, for the veterinary care.
Now, obviously, progressing on to our level three diploma suites, we've got two options for level three. The, the most popular is our level three extended diploma in animal management, which is a two year offer. Um, and that's predominantly based over at main site, our main campus. So entry onto that course is 5A to C in math, English and science. But we do have a slightly smaller version, so a smaller diploma, so a level three option for students that haven't quite achieved their, their C grade at maths and or English. We'd still require students to have a C grade for science for the diploma, um, but we will allow entry onto that if students still need to, to, to continue with their GCSEs in maths and or English. So it enables the students to be able to manage one or potentially two full GCSEs alongside studying a level three program. So again, again, the progression onto that would, would be year two, um, but we do offer that as a one year standalone option. So students that potentially wanted to take a side step after the first year, they would still have achieved a qualification at the end of year one. So again, just in summary, this, this slide is a little bit similar, but it really does highlight the, the progression routes quite well. So like I've said, a lot of the students will progress from level one to level two to level three, but some of the programs will enable direct entry into employment. Obviously, the, the lower the level, um, that obviously reflects the, the nature of the job role. So level one and level two, you're probably looking at more entry level roles, entry level jobs, so kind of assistant type positions, whereas progressing onto level three and then entering the industry, you'd be looking at more management or supervisory roles. So again, your course level does depend on your, your GCSE grades, um, but we really do have a course for you regardless of your grade. So again, if you were to apply for one of our courses, so for example, the level three, and you felt that your, your grade predictions are strong and you feel that you're going to achieve your, your five A's to C in maths, English and science, if that didn't happen um, and you weren't to achieve that, we would automatically by default offer you a level two programme. OK, so we definitely do have a course for you. You wouldn't have to reapply. We would offer you the higher or the lower level regardless um, of your grade. So like I said, you can progress up through the levels and, you know, a, a very significant proportion of our level threes progress on to university. It's probably a perfect opportunity to, to highlight that, again, this year we have supported students into a range of degree, degree programmes, including animal health and welfare, behaviour and zoology are among the, the most popular. Veterinary nursing is popular and we've also had a student that's been accepted into vet school as well this year, following the level three extended diploma um, science stream which is fantastic. So again, we really do have a course for, for everyone. Now, just moving on to the study programme. So this slide really just gives you a visualisation of what a study programme actually is. So similar to the first slide, um, a government study, study programme is comprised of various elements. So obviously, the, the main qualification um, is what we offer, so level one, up to level three advanced and and the breadth and the depth of that qualification obviously will depend on on the level of study so like i've said level one is more of a foundation introduction into animal care and husbandry and obviously it would advance up through the levels a significant part of the study programs in animal care are made up of the work experience element again which i'll talk a little bit um, about more in a bit more detail shortly You've also got your maths and English element. So students that haven't achieved a C grade or a four um, at their GCSE will continue to study that. If you've achieved lower than um, a D grade, so you're looking at kind of two, lower than two, um, we would target you at functional skills. But again, regardless of the level, even if you achieved your A's to C, we would want to continue and progress you with your maths and English, it doesn't stop at grade C. So again, having those key skills in maths and English are so vital. So we would want to continue and promote that development throughout your entire study program. Again, I've mentioned it earlier, but development of professional behaviours and character strengths will be a key part of the study program 
that you study on, regardless of the level, uh, level one up to level three, where it's so important that we recognize those character strengths, those personal professional behaviors that are going to enable you to progress into the industry successfully. So like I've mentioned, confidence, resilience, um, respect, vigilance. It's so, so important to, to have those, those key strengths in order for you for you know to progress. Um, and again, I've mentioned um, enrichment already. I touched upon the South Africa study tour earlier, um, whereby um, we do offer a range of educational trips uh, on every course. Um, but we also include external speakers, employers into the delivery of the curriculum as that, that, that's vital. And um, so again, enrichment slash enhancement as it's titled on there um, is, is vital. So what can we offer you? Specialist lessons. So I'm just going to talk a little bit about the content, if you like. So I've talked about the levels. Um, I'm just going to talk a little bit about the, the content. I'm not going to go into significant detail um, about every module, but just really give you an overview of the, the types of lessons that we do have um, on offer for you. So I'm just going to talk about the, the lessons that we that we offer, so the types of subjects that you will be studying um, if you were to, to choose Moulton to come and study animal care. So the, the sessions obviously will be um, a combination of practical and theory lessons. So again, at level one, you're looking at about 50-50% practical theory. At level two, you're looking at about 60% theory, 40% practical. And at level three, it's about 70% theory, 30% practical, purely because it's a more academic A-level equivalent program. So there is a more, more theory content, um, more underpinning knowledge that is required on those programs. So at level one and two, again, I've just really given an overview, as you can see, of the core modules. So obviously health and safety is at the forefront of everything. So at every level you will study health and safety and safe working in the animal industry because it's absolutely crucial and that will underpin everything that you do. Um, everything from animal health, handling, behaviour, feeding, again, biology. Um, it's not listed on there, but again, having a basic foundation knowledge of how animals work links into most of the things that you will need to study. Biology uh, links in with feeding, it links in with behaviour. So again, just moving on to level three, I've just summarised um, a couple of the, the key modules on there. So practical animal has husbandry, in addition to the, the modules listed above. Animal nursing, again, which is a very, very popular module for so students that have an interest in you know, pursuing a career in veterinary nursing that complements animal health beautifully because obviously it's a brilliant progression on from that unit. And then I've just highlighted here um, on the level three extended diploma, which is what I talked about earlier, you can uh, streamline your interests in year two. So you can pick one of three streams. So brand new to, to September, we are now um, including a wildlife and conservation stream. So for those students who are particularly interested in wildlife, ecology, etc. At the moment, we just offer two, but we are ex expanding that from September to, um, to support our students with their, their career pathways. So like I've said, the animal industry is extremely vast. You know, it, it's a very, very huge, it's a competitive industry. So it's really, really important that we provide a really broad range of modules to enable you to develop your skills in that area, but also to provide you with um, almost an insight into those different careers to enable you to make an informed choice, an informed decision about your progression. So just to talk about work experience then, like I've said previously, work experience is a significant part of all of the animal welfare study programmes. So it is a mandatory part and um, that's not only dictated by the fact that it's a study programme, but also by the awarding body. So BTEC and City and Guilds recognise that, you know, land based qualifications that will include animal welfare, equine, whether it be agriculture, floristry. Students need to engage in industry experience in order to develop um, and progress um, your skills. It's so important that you experience or first hand experience working with employers. So as part of your course, you will complete up to 150 hours of work experience per year. So again, level one students will be completing around 60 hours. 
level two and level three complete up to 150 hours per year. So that's achieved in two ways. You will, will achieve that through our internal work experience program, which we name commercial experience, where you get to work on our amazing animal welfare center. You work with our fabulous technicians. So you work in smaller groups and you support with management of our collection. It's also achieved ex externally. So the majority of the work experience hours that you are, um, will complete will be completed externally in a placement. So I've listed some examples on, on the presentation that could be anything from a veterinary practice. It could be a kennel. It could be a farm, a pet store, etc. So start thinking now what interests you have, what role you see yourself in perhaps in a few years time when you want to enter the industry. Start thinking about what's around you, where you live, what you can access from September. So again, um, that's perhaps really key that you can travel to your work experience. So you'll be allocated a work experience day um, within your working week. Um, and again, that's quite a flexible approach. It might be that you secure a place on a Saturday, which again is perfectly fine. Um, but just at this early stage, start thinking about work experience and where you would see yourself, what role would you see yourself in? And by all means, start making some contact this early on. Obviously, this is a process that we will 100% support you with if you were to come and join us from September, but there's definitely no harm in, in getting ahead of the game and start thinking about it early start potentially making some contacts or perhaps preparing a CV um, obviously to, to support this process. So like I've said, it's nothing to worry about and we will 100% support you with it, but it's not too early to, to start thinking about it. So again, in Richmond, I've, I've touched upon already, it's a, a key part of the study programme and it, it, it's vital that our students engage in, in Richmond. So as part of every course, there will be at least two external speakers. So that means there'll be at least two, whether it be employers or self-employed and um, people that come in and speak to the students to discuss a particular topic or potentially also talk about careers and, and progression opportunities. So, for example, on the level three, we teach a, a module called human animal interactions, which is basically an animal training module, which the students absolutely love because it involves training animals to specific training goals, husbandry goals, of course. Um, but we may get in somebody from perhaps the medical detection dogs to come and do a talk about how they train their animals. Or it could be that we get somebody in from the guide dog association to talk about how they train and the students can compare different training methods. So the external speakers will definitely have an input into the, the module delivery in relation to animal behaviour, but also students, it's a fantastic opportunity for students to, to ask questions about progression into that industry. And um, we also offer um, educational visits like I've already talked about. Every trip will go on at least one educational visit. Obviously, zoo trips are quite popular because we can tie in quite a lot of assessment with the zoo trip. So, for example, animal behaviour studies, students can go out with their, their ethograms and they can they can conduct behavioural observations and we can tie in specific assessment elements with that trip, which obviously is, is fantastic. Obviously, we have career support at the college and we run a careers fair every year again, where we invite external employers in to, to come and talk about their fantastic industry and, and their job roles. Obviously, team building activities are, are really important. So, that's also made up of some of our commercial experience where you'll work as part of a, a technician team, if you like, to, to develop your, your confidence, your communication skills. But obviously working in the animal industry, um, a lot of the roles are teamwork roles. So it's really, really important to develop those soft skills in order to, to progress. And I've obviously already talked about our amazing South Africa study tour opportunity um, that students will have the option to apply for. And that currently runs over June, but obviously it's very popular, as I'm sure you can imagine. Just to touch upon some additional costs. So really the only kind of mandatory cost um, linked to our animal care study programmes is the, the cost of PPE, so personal protective equipment. So as you can see in the picture, 
beautifully demonstrated by one of our specialist lecturers, Pam Sanchez, um, who is in her bright red lab coat. Obviously, you can spot the, the tutor off um, a mile off. Um, so the students wear a blue veterinary tunic, they wear over trousers, and they wear steel toe cap boots. So that is a, a standard mandatory kit for what we'd call your small animal care practical sessions. So that is something that you can order through BACA, which is a health and safety uh, PPE supplier um, in the UK. It's not something that you, again, that you need to worry about now. It's something that we can provide you details with later on. But it's just to give you an idea of the equipment that you will need. So it's beautifully modelled by, by the students in the photo. And for those of you that are considering level three in the second year, um, you'll study a core module called breeding and genetics. So you'll need to um, get a separate set of overalls and still take up wellies to enable you to go and work on our farm. So you can work with the beef and the sheep because you'll obviously be studying breeding and genetics and breed development. So some of that content involves working with our livestock. So again, you get the opportunity to go and work on our farm, which is obviously quite exciting. And again, if you were to also want to um, do any enrichment up at the equestrian centre, we'd also need you to have separate PPE. So it's really important that we separate the PPE that we wear on the animal welfare centre from the other um, subject areas for biosecurity reasons. So that's the basic kit, but again, you can contact um, um, finance because obviously bursaries are available um, and you may be eligible for a bursary and obviously a bursary would cover the cost so it's around about 55 pounds for the full kit of your your tunic your over trousers and still take up wellies but as I said we supply students through backer so you can obviously make an order um, and get your PPE um, in time for September so the next slide is just giving you an overview of the typical timetable, really, um, of a Moulton College student or an animal care student. So obviously we offer full time study programmes and these are delivered over three days at college. So within your working week, if you like, you will attend college for three of those days. Within those three days, you will study your animal care vocational studies, so your practical and your theory. You will study your maths and or English where relevant you will have your tutorial session. So your college attendance is three days. The other two days are split into a work experience day and a study day. So again, you'll notice that I've put the word flexible next to work experience day, because ultimately you can use your study day and your work experience day interchangeably. So it might be that, like I said, on the Saturday, or it could be the Thursday, which is your allocated study day, that you actually are going to do work experience, and that's fine as long as you're not planning to do work experience on the days that you're expected to come to college. So that does really highlight that this is a full time study program. Um, and just a reminder that the different levels reflect the amount of theory and practical content that you will study. So just a reminder, at level one, it's about 50 50. At level two, we're looking at 40 percent theory, 60 uh, percent practical. And level three is 70 percent theory, so slightly higher theory content due to the nature of the course. So there's a lot more underpinning theory knowledge that students are required to, to learn and 30% practical. But don't let that put you off because ultimately you have one, potentially two days of work experience to include commercial experience. So across the week, you will do a significant amount of, of practical learning. I've already mentioned your maths and English, so that will be embedded into your three days. So that could be a GCSE, it could be a functional skill or it could be both if you're really lucky um, or it could be neither. So for students that don't need to do maths and English, you'll get some additional directed study time and, and some smart targets set for you um, if you're not required to do that. Um, you'll have dedicated personal development sessions. So again, within your three days at college, you'll have a session that's titled personal development and that's delivered currently as a group tutorial when, with a pastoral officer. Um, covering various different themes like prevent, health and safety, UCAS, etc. Um, so that's a dedicated lesson every week, an opportunity for you to liaise with your pastoral officer, discuss any kind of um, topics, any themes, but also get 
one-to-one -one support from your pastoral officer as well and they will work alongside your your course tutor and manager who will support you through your academic studies and, and there'll also be some self-directed study so as i've mentioned before within in your three days those of you that don't study maths and english will do some additional self-directed study but obviously don't forget that on your study day there will be the expectation that you can study at home and if you can't study at home it may be that you need to come in and study at college to complete your coursework so progress and career opportunities i know that i've touched upon this already and i've talked about the the degree progression that, that we have at the college from our level threes but again you can just see a range of job roles that our students do progress on to so like i've said students that enter the industry following a level one or level two program will enter kind of assistant or entry level type position so it could be a kennel and category assistant type role it could be a veterinary care assistant students that study and progress from level three or potentially degree level will move into more supervisory or management positions. So currently, 40% of our students um, progress into the, um, into the industry. We have a significant proportion that progress on to, to higher education. So again, um, veterinary nurse and, and veterinary surgeon is on there. Like I said, this year we've had some fantastic success and one of our students did manage to secure a place at the Royal College in London um, to study her degree in veterinary medicine, which is fabulous. So reasons to choose a career in animal management. If I haven't persuaded you already, um, as I've mentioned, it is an extremely diverse industry with multiple different career pathways. It's huge, which is partly the reason why we need to offer a broad range of modules, uh, provide a broad level of understanding and knowledge into all of these multiple different pathways. Obviously, it's very rewarding, um, as I'm sure you can imagine working with animals every day. Um, it is extremely rewarding. You are able to make a difference. So if you're working in veterinary care, if you're working in charity work, you are ultimately making a difference to those animals' lives. Um, one of the benefits, again, there is a lot of all practical work, a practical element to a lot of these roles. So again, you are in direct contact with animals a lot of the time. Um, like I said, it's a very active role for example, an animal welfare technician, for example. Um, you may be able to start your own business. So we have had students that have progressed on. They, they want to be an entrepreneur um, and they set up their own business. So that is an option for you, regardless of the level. Um, I've had students in previous years that really want to be or set up their own dog walking business and they've successfully set that up through Facebook um, and they now run quite, quite a popular um, dog walking business which is fab um, and obviously having a formal qualification and an insight um, and understanding into this industry um, and animal husbandry supports your your progression into into the, the animal world if you like so what else is good to know so some of the things that perhaps I haven't touched upon in, in a significant amount of detail and please feel free to to, to join the Q&A session um, or drop us an email about anything that, that we don't cover, but just a few other bits that you might need to be aware of. So like I've mentioned, in addition to the pastoral officer, you will have a course manager. So that's somebody who looks after your entire cohort, and then that might be split down in, uh, uh, into tutor groups. So it could be that you have a personal tutor, and then you have a course manager as well, if you're on a very large course like the level two diploma. So your course manager will support you through your academic studies, will monitor your assessment journey to make sure that you are making good progress and, and put support in place to ensure that you reach your, your personal targets. Um, obviously, the wraparound support that we can offer at the college is pretty amazing. So we've got an amazing student welfare team that can provide on-demand uh, or ongoing support if you're having any kind of particular personal um, problems we can support you with that we have a team of um, counselors we have mental health first aiders we have first aiders we have a chaplain obviously we can support you with any of your personal needs we obviously have a, a brilliant learning support um, department again if you at this stage are thinking that you may need some learning support with your studies please do not worry because what we will do is we'll invite you back in for 
a learning support interview where we can discuss the learning support that you need to ensure that come September we can have the, the and, you know set up the support so it's in place for you. Um, I haven't really talked much about assessment, but again, the assessment methods will 100% vary depending on the level that you're studying. So again, at level one, it's predominantly coursework based, similar to level two. There are some online exams um, or GOLA tests that we call them, um, but predominantly you'll be completing coursework at level one and level two. At level three, purely due to the, the academic nature of the study programme, there will be some external assessment and some exams. So yes, there will be coursework, um, but there are some exams in animal biology, breeding and genetics, for example, on the extended diploma, and also welfare and ethics in year one. So again, it's, that's why it's really, really important that we have the right student on the right course, and, and we have those great entry requirements just to make sure that we can support you to make progress and be successful. Obviously, you, you may not be aware, but we have a very, very um, broad transport service, um, which has a very, very large area that it covers. So again, if you're worried about where you live, um, please get in touch because we can provide you with the, the transport route, so if we can accommodate you. But also not forgetting that we also have on-site on accommodation. Um, so again, if you live perhaps two, three hours away, but you really want to come and study at Moulton, you can come and live in um, and, and live in one of our halls. And again, you can ask questions about that. Um, and we'll also, there'll also be virtual tours available so you can have a look around the, the halls of residence. And I've just touched upon it previously. There is financial support available, which is income assessed. So please have a look. You may be eligible and that would cover the, the cost of your personal protective equipment and any, anything that you need in order to study in addition to the transport service that you may require. Um, just what's good to know for practical lessons. So I've already mentioned the, the PPE requirements, um, again, beautifully modelled by this young lady who is feeding the knee cats um, there, as you can see. So veterinary tunic, over trousers and steel toe cut boots. Um, it's really, really important that we maintain very high industry standards. So I'm probably going to argue, not that I'm biased, that we have probably some of the highest industry standards at Moulton College um, and in animal welfare. So there are some health and safety rules that you'll need to be aware of in advance so you can make an informed decision. In order to keep you safe, in order to keep the animals safe, we have a no jewellery policy for practical lessons. That not, that's not to say that you can't wear jewellery for college, you can, um, but for practical lessons, all of your jewellery, um, whether it be facial piercings, ear piercings, will need to come out. It's so important that we keep you safe because that's our primary responsibility um, during the time that you're with us, but also it's really important that we keep the animals safe. There are, um, we don't want students to have acrylic nails either. So if you can imagine if you are handling small mammals, so for example, a Syrian hamster, you can do quite a lot of damage with um, acrylic nails. So we wouldn't expect students that study animal welfare to have long acrylic nails. Um, we would need those to be removed. And again, like I've mentioned, the PPE is available from BACA. Now, um, those rules are obviously in place to, to safeguard you and the animals. So just to bear that in mind. Um, OK, so you can obviously um, ask any questions um, and send any questions through to our live Q&A sessions. Um, but that's it from me. Thank you very much for listening.